week we started talking about the armor of God and sharing a few things and breaking some things down for you. It's been a privilege to sow this word into your life and to talk about uh, who we are in Christ and who Christ is within us. The power and the authority that we have to walk in and exercise as the mouth, the hands, and the feet of Christ because associated with Him as our head, we are the functioning body parts on the earth. Hallelujah, it's just like our natural body. We need all of our body parts. It's Christ, perfect predestined will that we function, that we flow, that we move together in true unity, amen, and that we go evangelize the world. The Bible says, when this gospel is preached and heard around the world, Yeshua will come back, Lord to God. So we're excited to equip you. Again, my job, and then let's go back and uh, look at it in Ephesians chapter uh, 4. You know, our job as overseers and ministers in the household of faith is to help equip the saints. And let's go back and read it. These are the gifts that Christ gave after his resurrection and uh, his ascension. He gave these gifts to the body of Christ. He called men to be, hallelujah, in the fivefold ministry and uh, to be anointed elders. Verse 11, and he himself, Christ, Yeshua, gave some, not many, not most, but some. Sometimes there's too many, way too many. What I mean by that is there's a lot of hirelings out there. They haven't been called and anointed to lead the flock. There's a lot of false prophets and false teachers out there. But all that aside, God has still his remnant of leaders, presbyter, bishops and overseers in the household of faith. Those that will preach the word of God. Those that aren't hirelings. Those that will truly lay their life down for the sheep. Will sacrifice. Hallelujah. Labor. And cry. And laugh. And pray over your souls. And to speak in your life. Even with admonition and rebuke. Because we love your souls. Your souls have eternal value. And it's our goal that you make it to the finish line. And beyond. And the Lord will look at you and say well done. Uh, thy good and faithful servant. You ran a good race. You fought a good fight. Enter now into the everlasting joy that I have for you. Eternity with the Lamb of God and the King of glory and the, the great I Am. Hallelujah. So our job, amen, is to help you equip, be equipped, to lead us to a place of true unity and for you to stand on your own two feet. I don't want you tugging on my pant leg the rest of you a dog Christian like, Pass it, Keith, what do I do next? No, we're here to equip you to stand on your own two feet, to have backbone, and to stand up against the wiles and schemings of the devil. And verse 11, He himself, Yeshua, gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. God didn't change. Some people believe that these gifts, some of them died off. There's only two remaining, pastors and teachers. Uh -huh, wrong answer. The fivefold ministry is still alive. There are prophets today, true prophets of God. There are true apostles today. There are true evangelists and pastors and teachers, right? Am I at the city morgue this afternoon or we among the living? Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 12 says this. What's our job? Hallelujah. What do we need to do? What's the gifts that we operate in? For equipping the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Mashiach, Christ, the anointed one. Verse 13, till we all come into the unity of faith, glory to God, and to the knowledge of the Son of Elohim, our God, to a perfect man, a complete man, a mature man, if you will, one that has grown up, one that can eat the meat. You're not just stuck on the milk, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. You're not carnal and fleshly, but we are spirit-filled and spirit-led men and women of God, standing on our own two feet, glory, understanding, amen, the unity of God and His will. Till we all come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of who Mashiach is, verse 14, that we should no longer be children, immature, carnal, just tossed to and fro, with every, and carried about with every one of doctrine, that's bad doctrine, that's heresies, that's good doctrine, things can be taken out of balance, people can be tossed to and fro, people can just be trying something, I know a lot of people that are prematurely gone, because they were trying to ride on somebody else's coattails, 
because they tried something, because the fake preachers and the healer preachers said, you got to stop going to the doctors, you got to get off your medication, and people are gone, they're gone, they're gone. But our job is to help teach you these truths. Faith is real. Healing is real. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit is real. Power to live as a Christian is real. But our job is to equip you to walk in the balance. Not to be tossed to and fro. Not to run to this meeting because so and so is over there and follow that preacher over there. And turn on the TV and just click, 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 click. And that's your church. No, 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 no. We need to get into the Word. We need to be established in a local church. Hallelujah. Where we're growing and evolving together. Where God's Spirit is alive and well. And where we can come to this fullness of unity. There's nothing wrong with other teachers. There's nothing wrong with some uh, TV preachers. There's nothing wrong with going to some meetings. Are you hearing me? Yeah. But if that's all we're doing, run it. I know people, all they do is run to this meeting, to that meeting, and they take in a hodgepodge of all kinds of crap. Oh, look, come on, somebody. Yeah. But I want to hear from the Lord. Yeah. I want to be taught by the Holy yeah. Ghost. I want to be under the anointing of God, and I want to be full yeah. of what is absolutely true. Glory to God. He doesn't want us to be immature children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftedness by which they lie and wait to deceive. There are men behind pulpits today, all they want to do is lie in their pockets with your money. They just want to rape the people, use and abuse. They'll never lay their life down for the sheep. That's why only some are called. Some have been chosen. Hallelujah. Some have been called Hallelujah. Many call, few have been chosen. There's a lot of cold people today and some are even frozen. But I want you to be on fire. I want you to be hot. I want you to be able to stand up against the devil in a time, time of testing. Amen? Amen? Verse 15, but speaking the truth, absolute truth, and in agape love, that we may all grow up together in all things. That we may came, come to an understanding of the fullness of who God is. Come on. Yeah. And what He has for Him, for us. That we might grow up into Him, Yeshua HaMashiach, who is the head. Jesus the Christ is the head over the body. Verse 16. In whom the whole body, that's me and you, were joined together, knitted together, by what every joint supplies. Every joint supplies. Every one of you in Christ's name who is a part of the body of Christ will supply. You're not just here to receive. You're here to give. You're not just alive today to walk in and just receive, receive, receive. You're here to get fed, push away from this table, go out into the world and be the body parts, the witnesses, amen, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, the prophets, whatever God's called you on to, to walk in the gifting, the ability that God gave you by His Spirit to preach and teach and be a witness, amen, and to give out. So every body part supplies. Come on. Our hands need to do what hands do. Our feet need to do what our feet do. We need to see with our eyes and hear and speak. Amen? We need all of our body parts. Christ needs us. Yes, He could come down Himself. And He has heaven to earth. He's come down to fill you, to anoint you, to raise you from the dead. Yeah. Hallelujah. To quicken your spirit that we might be alive in Him and full of power yeah. and have some backbone to go out and make a difference in our world yeah. and to yes. share the good news about yeah. Christ. Hallelujah. And how we can be saved. Glory to God. Every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share. All of you need to do your share. All of us together coming in unity. Moving with our head. Amen. You know what? Sometimes it looks like this. Here's Yeshua going. Here's where the body's going. And then the body part's doing this. <laughs> know what I mean? Christ is letting it go this way. The head's going this way. Most of the body's going this way. Yeah. And some yin yang's out there doing their own thing. <laughs> How can we move together when there's body parts doing their own thing? Not listening to God. Not flowing with His unified spirit. Not going with His will in this life. Yeah. We can't be rebellious. We can't resist the Holy Spirit. We can't turn away from God's word. That's why, hallelujah, we're here to equip you. Yeah. Help us all to come to this unity, hallelujah. Yeah. That we can walk in this power. 
That we can be obedient sons and daughters and fulfill the will of God in this life through ministry. It says every part, every body part doing its share. It then will cause growth of the body and for edifying of itself in agape love. Then it goes on to talk about putting on the new man. So our job, my job is to restore power back to the local church. To restore power back to your life. There's a lot of things that have been lost over the years. Yeah. A lot of outside influences that have come in to the church. Man, there's such a hodgepodge of all kinds of stuff. But I'm from the old school, glory to God. I want to believe God. I want to stick with what is absolutely true. I want to preach the doctrines of our faith. What God wants us to do, hallelujah. So my job is to restore power back to the church. Where's the signs and wonders today? Where's the miracles today? They are happening in America a little bit less us because there's such a hodgepodge of rebellion and schizophrenia in the church. You know, God's not schizophrenic. God's not an enabling God. He, wa he wants us to change. He wants us to grow and evolve, and He wants us to grow up. Amen. 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 So as we continue and go back to uh, uh, chapter 6, we're going to take a look at putting on the full armor. And again, this is just a segment of the months of teaching we've been doing on walking in the resurrection life and power of God and being the men and women of God He's called us to be in the body of parts. That he wants us to be anointed. To know who we are in Christ. Where are we in Christ right now? Raise your hand when you get the answer. What have we been talking about? Huh? We're in the body. Yeah, okay. Where's Christ at right now? Seated in the heavenlies. The Bible says that we are seated in the heavenlies with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Where's our citizenship? Heaven. Heaven. What kind of benefits we have? By being a citizen of heaven, the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Oh. Below all. Hallelujah. So that means we're above, not beneath. We're the head and not the tail. That's what the Bible says about us. Amen. That truly we can understand and know him in the resurrection of his, the power of his resurrection. That we've died to self. Amen. That we can be resurrected in Christ. Now what did Yeshua do on the earth? Wow. What's his will? for mankind and what's his will for the body of Christ how should we function just sit in our, 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 our sit down places on a Sunday morning on a no. padded seat and go out and go oh that was good three days later hey what pastor preach on uh, Sunday oh geez I forgot yeah. <laughs> I know it was good though I remember it was good I forgot then we shut our mouth we're not used we don't make a difference and it's Sunday no. go to meeting Again and then out, the same old cycle. We gotta break that cycle. We gotta stop those reactions. We need to be doers of the word, not just hearers, right? And when we turn away from the mirror, hallelujah, we need to remember what manner of man or woman we are, amen, and what Christ has called us on to. You have the power in your world and the people you touch to be a light, just like Dustin's testimony. Hallelujah. Now we can be a light, hallelujah. We can share God's good news. Dead men walking all by us. Man, they're on death row. Yeah. And you know you know what? Since we've been sitting in here and enjoying God and His goodness, there's been two and three quarter people die and go to hell every second since we've been in this room. Around the world. Yeah. Almost three people a second are dying. Wow. Well, we've been sitting in here rejoicing. Wow. That's sad. Scary. People walk by us all the time when we turn turn the other way or we're intimidated or afraid to speak out. Well, the Holy Spirit's moving. You need to go to this person. You need to share. We don't have to jam religion down people's throat. We don't have to try to force them into something. But how can they hear without a preacher? When they come to this place, the crossroad of life, when they've been presented to the gospel and they've come to light, they then are responsible for their actions. Yeah. You know, who's going to hell? Who's going to be in hell? Is it sinners? No. Who's going to be in hell? Christ rejecters. Christ rejecters. Those that reject the gospel message. Those that won't bow their knee and confess Him as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Those that will detest the good news, the gospel. Those that turn away to do 
doing the wrong thing. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but that way leads to destruction. Hallelujah. That's death. Yeah. Sin leads to death. Eternal. Physical first and eternal. Amen. We have the power to change our tomorrow by what we do today. Come on, somebody. Right. All of us in this room, God took the best of your mother and your father and created you in the matrix of your mother's womb. He brought us forth and gave us life. Breathe life. Gave us a living spirit, a soul. Hallelujah. Mind, will, and emotions. He gave us a house to live in for a short period of time. When we look at you, we just see your, your house. We don't see the real you. The real you is living inside the temple, the tabernacle, this tent, this house. God gave you that. When he brought you forth, he brought you forth with destiny, with purpose. Mm -hmm. Oh, some of us have been violated. Some of us heard a bad news. Some of us were cursed at, and some of us were hurt and wounded. And some of our some of us lost our innocence from our childhood. And 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 so we've sought the world for this and that and the other thing, and we're emotionally damaged. That's a sad thing. That's not why God brought us forth. That's not God's destiny for us. He wants us to be healed. He wants us to be restored. He wants us to be full. He wants us to overcome. He wants us to rise up in deliverance and amen. Be the body parts he's called us to be. But he brought us all forth with destiny and with purpose. Yeah. And we can fulfill that. You hold the key to your own destiny. Yeah. By the choices you make today. By the decisions you make today. If you want to be hung up on yesteryear, you'll be hung up to the grave. Hallelujah. You can't go back and change anything. If we're going to allow ourselves to be beat up, condemned, guilt-driven, and shameful for the rest of our life, if we want to be the victim, if we want to blame others for our own actions, you'll go to the grave like that. Even with good intentions, you'll go to the grave. The road that leads to hell is paved with good intentions. We need to change. We need to get off the crazy cycle. We need to repent. We need to change our mind and our state and thinking. We need to calibrate our belief system on what is absolutely true. We need our concepts, our ideas. That's where we make choices and decisions. That's where we fortify ourselves in. That's where we uh, move, hallelujah, in our belief system. But if that's not calibrated on absolutely true, guess what? We're already flawed. Yeah. Well, Jeremiah 17. Heart is the most deceitful thing we'll deal with, even yeah. more so than the devil. Why? Because he can't force you to sin. God won't make you get saved. We have a free will and we're going to choose to do what we want to do. Nobody's going to crack your style. Nobody's going to slow you down. You know what? You're going to do what you want to do. If you want to get saved and serve God the rest of your life, you'll do that. Yeah. If you want to reject Christ and turn away from the good news, that's the life you'll choose. But our ways are not His ways. Our thoughts are not His thoughts. He's way above us. Amen. And the way we think, the way we want to do it, leads to death. Alright? Amen. Amen. Let's take a look at a few things. That's just, uh, that's just the groundwork for the opening statements of where I want to go. Alright, let's go to uh, chapter 6, looking at verse 10 again. Um, hallelujah, son. We're still in Ephesians. That's my little, little sticky one there. But I found it, praise God. Alright, we're just going to touch on a few things here, and then time will get by us, and we'll have to pick up next Sunday. We get to pick up. So I keep calling that job security. If I can't finish the message today, guess what? You guys want to have me back next Sunday. To finish. And then we won't finish, and we'll just keep it going. Yeah. All right, hallelujah. Let's read verse 10, chapter 6, the book of Ephesians. We're going to look at the armor. Now, last week I said it's not so much the pieces of the armor, but it's what the armor represents. That's what God wants us to get, all right? That's what we need to walk in. That's what we need to be, because that's the nature of Christ. Hallelujah. The breastplate is just a work picture for us to associate what they represent. Hallelujah. So we don't take it off and put it on. Amen daily. This is what we walk in. This is what we live. But this is what the pieces mean. And we're going to take a look at the fullness of uh, some of those things. And we want to break some neat things down to you starting today, Lord willing, and going into the next uh, week or so. 
The Apostle Shaul, will, the Apostle Paul says this, Finally, my brethren, he says, be strong in the Lord. Not strong in your flesh, not strong in your carnality, not strong in your weapons, yeah. your tongue, and what you can do with the arm of the flesh. No, he wants us to be strong in the Lord. Yeah. You know, I said this all the time. There will be no girly men in the kingdom of God. <laughs> We're here to pump you up. Hallelujah. Amen. In truth and knowledge and the fullness of the Holy Spirit of God. We don't have to turn out Saturday Night Live TV either, do we? We don't always have to listen to Hans and Franz. But we do need to listen to the Holy Ghost. We need to apply the Word of God. And we need to walk. Hallelujah. And it's absolute truth. So he says this. Be strong in the Lord. And the power, look at here, what is that word power? Dynamite, dudamus, dynamo, dynamic, come on Dustin, right here it is, brother, power. Dudamus power, be strong in the Lord, how do we do that? And in the power of His might, glory to God. Who are we in Yeshua, and who's Yeshua in us? The fullness of God, of His fullness we have received, glory to God. So literally in Christ we lack nothing. Really. And this life and the life to come. Oh man, there's a lot of powerful word to back that up. Go look it up, hallelujah. And verse 11. Put on the whole armor of Elohim our God. That you may then be able to withstand or stand against the wiles of the devil. His schemes, schemings of the devil. Again, what does that mean in the original language? It means this. The devil's cleverness, his craftiness, his crafty methods, his cunningness, his deceptions. He does plot. He devises plans. Yeah. And he devises sequences of events. The devil tries to herd you in the direction he wants you to go. He will use people, circumstances, conditions. He'll bombard your mind with evil thoughts and fiery darts. But we don't have to entertain. We don't have to open the door when those thoughts come to knock. We don't have to habitually respond. We don't have to be a good host or hostess. See, now you be behind me, Satan. Yeah, I'm not going there today. You know, just because we have a thought doesn't mean it's our thought. Right. Just because we have a thought passed through doesn't mean we committed any sin. Right. We can have all kinds of thoughts pass through our soul throughout our day. Doesn't mean it's us. Doesn't mean we have to own it. Doesn't mean we've even committed any sin. Right. But when we open the door and we begin to entertain those thoughts and we get to allow them to overlap and flow into the imagination. Now we're seeing things in our imagination and all of a sudden we're feeling things in our emotional realm. Now we're beginning to own those thoughts. We're looking at how to cast those down. We're looking at how to keep our heart pure. To the pure in heart, all things are pure, right? Hallelujah. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see who? Who are they going to see in the end? They're going to see God. Glory to God. How do we ascend to the hill of the Lord? Only those with pure hearts, clean hands, and a clear conscience. Come on, somebody. So... The devil has schemes. He has plans. He does plots. Sometimes he's very patient. Sometimes he's very methodical. He's very crafty and cunning. But it says, we, being equipped with the armor of God, or what those, the armor of God represents, we will be able to resist. We'll be able to stand, stand up against the wiles, the schemings of the devil, his plots, his plans. Now, the devil wants to move on the lust of our flesh. He wants to move on feelings. And as Sister Lisa was saying, he wants to say, man, this is all about you. Yeah. Isn't this all about you doing what you want to do mm -hmm. and making yourself feel good? Look, yeah. man, you've been a victim before, you know. Mm -hmm. Did God really say not to eat off of this tree over here? Huh? Mm -hmm. You know, God's holding something back. Aren't you wiser than God? Shouldn't you come into the latent power of the soul and, you know, draw people on yourself and be arrogant and prideful and be taking all the glory? Shouldn't you be there? You know, he comes with these things. These are wiles of the devil. And he uses people and circumstances and situations 
to try to trip you up, to try to hurt you in the way He wants you to go. But the Bible says that we will be able to stand against His schemes, His plans. Come on, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. And in verse 12, he goes in to say this. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. My friends, flesh and blood is not our enemy. Oh. For the Christian, for us to go down to the carnal arena and begin to use our tongue. There's people out here, you've used your tongue over the years. You can dice and slice somebody up in a second. You can cut them down and make them feel terrible, right? Yeah. This tongue is a deadly weapon. Hallelujah. This tongue has the power to speak life or death. Yeah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You frame your own world by the words you speak. If yeah. you curse yourself, if you're negative, if you're gossiping, backbiting, bickering, complaining, murmuring, if you're coming against authorities in your life, if you will, if you're talking about your neighbor, another brother, sister, the church, come on, somebody. Yeah. Even our prayers that are amiss and they're fleshly and carnal can send forth curses in the spirit realm. Yeah. We have to be so filled with God's spirit, so much in the light, so full of the knowledge of God's word, not just to have a knowledge, but to literally come to an understanding where we're walking and living in the rhema, the living, the understanding of God's word. That will produce in your life wisdom. You will be a prudent man and woman. You will be a wise maiden, a wise virgin, hallelujah, in the kingdom of God, full of oil, full of uh, God's spirit, full of testing, full of trials, Complete and mature and evolve to a place where well, you'll not just slumber and sleep. You'll not be intoxicated with the things of the earth. That you'll be sober-minded. That you'll be a watchful. That you'll be a man and woman of intense prayer. That you'll be a man and woman of faith. You'll be the watchman on the wall over your own soul. Glory to God. And you'll be watching out for others. Remember when Abishai went to war with King David? We talk, we, we talk a lot about Goliath, the first giant that David slew. But there was a time in David's life where he came up against another giant and he couldn't win the battle. He couldn't slay this one. But Abishai, his nephew, had a spirit to watch out for his uncle, to watch out for others around him. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Not only are we on the wall watching out for our own souls and to doing things right in submission to God's will, but we need to have an eye out for our brothers and sisters who's back. You don't know who's about to go down, who's about to be slain by the giant in their life. Yes. Abishai saw, he's over here, wham, he's dicing and slicing. He's in his own battle. <laughs> you know, he also looks over and he sees Uncle, Uncle David, ready to be beaten up by this giant. So Abishai, ta -da, comes to the rescue. No girly men in the kingdom, right? Here's Abishai coming to the rescue. Super. Abishai. Now these men that David had around him, these guys are almost like super, God bless you my friend. They're almost like superhuman. These guys could slay all kinds of people in one day. So Abishai comes and he slays this giant in David's life. Saves his life and preserves his kingship. Come on somebody. If we get so locked into self, woe is me, I'm the victim. And we're just looking out for self in a selfish way that we become an island to ourselves. We're not looking out for our brothers and sisters. We're not praying for others. We're not calling up. We're not sending a card. I'm so glad you're surrounded by a great group of people. Hallelujah. They call you. They check in. You can call them. They're praying for you. You know it. You feel it. Hallelujah. That's why she's 11 going on 12 days sober right there. Right there. Because others, not only fighting their own battle, came beside their sister to aid her in her battle. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. And she just has the want to to walk out her freedom. She has the want to to do what's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But if we just ignored her, if we didn't invest into her, would you have stayed? Would you be drunk today? Yes. Yeah. All right. God is good. And he's using his body parts. Hallelujah to flow in unity Amen. with their head, yeah. body parts supply, come on, yeah. sharing the law, yeah. glory to God. Yeah. And this woman has a testimony today. Yeah. Glory to God. He came to set the captive free. Yeah. How's he going to do that through you and me? Glory yeah. to God. He did the work. But you know what? I want to share this with you. 
Yeshua said it's finished at the cross. He's not doing one more thing to the devil. He's already did it. He kicked him in the head. Hallelujah. He took authority away from him and power away from him. So who's going to do it? Guess what? We are. He equipped us with power. He gave us the legal right to authority. He says, I'm not working through my body to fulfill my ministry on the earth. And so guess what? We have to rise up and be men and women of faith. We speak the word of God to others. We lay hands on the elders yeah. in Christ's name. We call out demons. We raise the dead. We can heal the sick. That's right. Remember we've been talking about no more begging prayers? Yeah. And now we're men and women of faith that we command prayers. Yeah. We begin to prophesy. We begin to command what's already true. Yeah. We don't have to beg God for healing. He already did it at the cross. My Bible says that Yeshua bought and paid for and at the cross of Calvary by the ripping and shredding of His flesh and the spilling of His blood, by His stripes you were already healed. Amen. We don't have to beg God. We just have to command His Word to work life in our life. We just have to speak and come in agreement with what Christ already says about us. He has equipped us to be His mouthpiece. We are now His hands and His feet in this life. That's messing with some people's religious mindsets and strongholds, I know, but that's true. Yeah. We will walk in this power and demonstration as soldiers of the light and glory to God. Oh, yeah. Amen. My friends, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Amen. People are not your enemies. Right. Demonic forces and influences will flow through other people because that is how the devil works. He uses tools too. He wants to use vessels. Yeah. He wants to possess people and animals. He wants to fulfill his will in this life through his demonic host. But flesh and blood is not our enemy. If we go down to the carnal arena, like I said, and we begin to fight in the flesh and use our tongue and our fleshly weapons, for the Christian, that's a lose lose place. That's a lose lose place. But when we understand that flesh and blood is not my enemy, that I'm not going to bring offense to you and I'm not going to receive an offense from you. I'm not going to be offended. Yeshua prophesied and said in the last days most people are going to become offended. Mm -hmm. They'll be offended with things this way and they'll become offended with God this way. Yeah. Most people will become offended and they'll begin to backstab each other and turn each other into the magistrates and squeal on you. All those guys are Christians. They're having Bible study in their house. I'm going to call the Pope, Pope. Hallelujah. I just saw a uh, video yesterday of a man just standing on the street corner reading out of his Bible. And he was arrested, handcuffed, and taken to jail just for reading the scripture on the street. Wow. It's upon us, people. This is where we're at. This is where we're here. We're here. Yeah. We need to be equipped. We need to be full. Yeah. We need to walk in this armor. Well, we're going to close for today. Amen. We'll need to get into uh, some more interesting things next week. Glory to God. And I will, as long as I have breath in this body, continue to preach the good news and equip the saints. Hallelujah. It's like, uh, the Apostle Peter. And if we're unified in Christ and coming under His exousia, His yeah. authority, and we've been filled with His Spirit, and we're in submission and obedience to Him, because he bought and paid for us with his own shed blood. We're no longer our own anyways. But one of the major things is, you know, the, the schizophrenia amongst Christians, quote unquote, the divisions and schisms within the church, and literally hypocrisy. The Bible says, let your love be without hypocrisy. It comes from a Greek word, hypocrites. Don't be a hypocrites. That's a stage player, one that's an actor, one that wears a mask. Oh, we sit all pious in church and then we go off and live like the devil throughout the week. You know, that's the biggest turnoff to the world. The biggest turnoff to other church members. The biggest turnoff in your own family to your own children as parents growing up. Because we are the Christ representative in this world that a lot of people are going to see. Even our own children. How we act. What we say about Christ. How we live. What words come out of our mouth. What kind of choices and decisions we make at the crossroad intersections of life in the valley of decision. They're watching us. And hypocrisy, if you take a look at it across the board, the number one turnoff that white teens are leaving the church when they get up and get over, older is because of the hypocrisy in their own home. The hypocrisy in their own home. Parents saying this, 
and commanding this, and then they're turning around and doing this, and children are watching and growing and saying, wow, man, wow. So most of the turn off and the turning away from our youth today is because of hypocrisy in the home, hypocrisy in the workplace, people watching you, and people listening to you, watching your facial expressions, your body languages, what the word is coming out of your mouth, what you do and how you work through your issues. How do you get through and cross the bridge and through the tunnel on the other side? People are watching you through that whole process because they're sick and tired of words. Yeah. They want to see action. They are sick and tired of being sick and tired. They're lost. They need a physician. And if you ain't got it to give it, you can't take nobody where you've never been. You can't be with you not. See what I'm saying? So don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. Amen. Amen. Don't turn people off by your foolishness and your misconduct and your lawless actions. Come on, somebody. People are drawn to Christ. Why? Because the world knows that we are his disciples for the agape, unconditional love we have one for another. For the unity we have in Christ. One voice. One mind. Hallelujah. One judgment. One mouthpiece, glory to God. We're all speaking the same thing. We're walking in the same way, glory to God. Yes, we're individuals. Yes, we have different giftings. Yes, we're different body parts. But yes, we're flowing together in true unity under the power of the Holy Spirit and by the anointing of Christ in our life, Him being the head, and we all join to Him, glory to God. This is what we need to do to go out and win the world. Amen?